Um, my name is Megan McLaughlin. Uh, my daughter, Sora, is nine years old. She has Down syndrome. She also has mixed expressive receptive disorder, um, moderate conductive hearing loss, and some sensory processing issues. My, my perspective right now, I know you're really big right now to transition because this is in high school. Well, Sora's in third grade, so we're talking standardized testing. And that makes me want to break out into hives, just thinking about what that's going to look like, how that's going to change her IEP, um, what her classroom situation is going to look like. We moved back to North Carolina, um, got her right back into early intervention services. Um, fortunately for me, Sora was diagnosed at three weeks old. And nobody's going to argue with you about Down syndrome. Um, there's always going to be some therapies there. Um, it's a diagnosis that everybody's pretty much familiar with. Um, so we were able to start, and going through early intervention and then into the preschool uh, system was pretty effortless. But what I would encourage you guys to be aware of, and this was something I had to learn from my fellow parents, that the school system is just one system that you're going to navigate. Um, and it's actually kind of small. I think my experience with fighting and advocating for my daughter was actually in the medical community. Um, we had a lot of behavior issues, meltdowns, um, talk of autism, um, but actually it ended up being conductive hearing loss. And until I put my foot down and said, we need to look further, we need to look further, um, we didn't get this addressed. But our first IEP meeting, and this was <laughs> still sticks out in my mind. Um, we did the play-based assessment. There was a group of people there. I'm sitting around answering questions, and I love this whole assessment part. I love answering questions about Sora. I think it's wonderful. And we came back a week later for the IEP, and we're sitting kind of, you know, round table, and everybody is so nervous. I'm like, okay. And they're like, what's your goal, Megan, for, for Sora? And I was like, well, you know, she's three. I think if you're gonna put me on the spot here, um, I'd like her to be in a fully inclusive kindergarten class. Never had a bad IEP meeting. I know that sounds very naive, but I kind of like a ninja. Um, I don't want to go in there and just be confrontational. I'm not very good at it. Um, I started with the Exceptional Children's Assistance Center. They invited me out to Greensboro to tell my story. And I was like, sure, again, I could talk about Sora all day. But then they dropped this little leadership thing in my lap. And I'm like, I don't want to do this. I don't want to be a leader. I don't want to, you know, I want to take care of my kid and know everything that I need to know. Um, but it really changed my life. Uh, after that, uh, the North Carolina Council for Developmental Disabilities um, in the state of North Carolina, they do, um, they host this training called Partners in Policymaking. Most states will have Partners in Policymaking, but it's a great opportunity for parents, um, for self-advocates, for teachers in training, for anybody who's really passionate about it to come to Raleigh, um, and you're going to learn. It's pretty extensive. It's one weekend a month, eight months, um, in, within one year, and at the end of it, we had to go down to the legislative building and give testimony. It was mock testimony, but that's that's not my bag at all. But it was meeting the parents, working with Ray. I think the first time that you we trained to be um, support parents for Family Support Network in like 2011. But you see the same people over and over and over again, and it becomes your natural support system. And Sora and I moved to Boone in 2013. We came back in 2015, and I'm just I'm insert myself right back in where we left off. And I talked to this kindergarten teacher, and I mentioned the potty training, and two seconds. Ah, we deal with that all the time. Sold. That's where you're going. Mm -hmm. They're gonna and, and that, that I mean just whatever makes it easy for me, whatever you can handle, whatever makes it easy for her. I think that was a great compromise. Um, and now we have Innovations Waiver, which is one of the other systems I can talk forever about. But this teacher, this kindergarten teacher, has actually her cap worker, who she Sora made such a profound effect on everybody that she comes in contact with that she carries them along with her throughout her life. And for me as a mother, when I found out I was going to be a mother, I was so excited. I wanted to be a mom. And when I found out I was going to have a little girl, I knew instinctively, I knew she was going to be a little wallflower. She's going to be a little intellect. She was going to be very smart, very sharp. She was going to be very quiet, very, no, I didn't get any of that. Sora is the absolute opposite of me. I don't know where she came from. I'm glad she is the way she is because she always will get the attention that she needs. Um, but she is a boss, and I'm not even kidding when I say that. She will come in here, um, she'll stand each and every one of you up in the room and tell you how to do your cheerleading moves, and you're not going to do it right, because nobody ever does it right. She's going to stop, and then she's going to come up to you, and she's going to redirect you, and it's not going to make any sense, but she just <laughs> wants to be a boss. And it's fantastic. It's really fantastic, and I just kind of get to sit back and take video and take pictures and talk about her all the time, and it's, it's wonderful. 